Welcome back to the show. Today I want to share some thoughts on the unnamed. You're going to say, John, what are you talking about the unnamed? I'm talking about those people that do an awful lot of work that don't necessarily have a title or they don't get, get uh, have their name in the spotlight or in the newspaper. But without those people, there would be a lot of activities that would not be accomplished in the world. Mark Sanborn said one time that you don't need a title to be a leader. And if you look back through history, you're going to see more times than not that the majority of people who impact change are people who, in fact, don't have a title at all. In fact, they, they don't even have any sort of uh, name in any way, shape, or form, but the people in charge seem to get the credit for it. But let me tell you this, if it wasn't for the people in the background, there would be no people that are really making change in the world. So again, the theme today is called the unnamed. Now, if you've watched the shows long enough, you know that some of the time I share stories from the Bible that illustrate the point that I'm trying to make in these broadcasts. And today is one of those shows. In the book of Acts, Acts is in the New Testament of the Bible, and it was written after Jesus was born and, and helped a lot of people and then was, he died. So Acts was written by some people that were, um, that knew Christ, or at least knew of Christ. And in Acts chapter 2, I'd like to share actually some reading from that storyline to illustrate the example of you don't need a title to lead people, or you don't necessarily have to have your name in lights to impact people's lives. So in Acts chapter 2, starting in verse number 42, it says, They are continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to the breaking bread and of, and of prayer. Now, they are talking about the people that uh, developed a, a love for Christ and to, to follow Christ. The story goes on. Everyone kept feeling a sense of awe, and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. Let me just clarify what that means. The apostles are people who uh, were around when Jesus lived, and they were able to help a lot of people using means that were pretty extraordinary. So in verse 44, it says, And to all those who had believed together and had all things in common, they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all, as anyone that might have need. And let me just, again, slow down and, and explain what I just read. In that culture, people would sell what they, what they earned, what they acquired, in order to meet the needs of other people. So he says in verse 46, day by day, continuing with one mind and, and sharing meals together, they, they were happy, they were sincere, they were praising God and having favor with all the people. Now let me just, again, slow down a little bit more. It seems in this story and throughout history that the people that are more selfless, the people that choose to share what they know and what they have and what they've acquired in many different forms, with other people, the more attention they get and the more ways they're able to impact people's lives. So in verse 42, it kind of paraphrases it more. So let me kind of share the, the modern day version of what I just shared. They committed themselves to the teaching of the apostles and life together and the common meal and prayers. And everyone was in awe because they chose to share their resources. Now I think you and I have a tendency sometimes not all the time, but sometimes, to, sh to withhold everything that we've learned, or maybe even some of the things that we've learned, with people that could, generally speaking, appreciate our information. What I've learned, I think more than uh, anything in life, is that I choose to read information about people who have made it big time in life so that I can shorten that learning curve in my own life. So what if the people who have written the books would not have written the books in order to share their information with people like you and I? I think more times than not, we choose to not share information with people that could, generally speaking, really uh, be impacted by our own story. You see, John, I don't have a story. You, you do. All of us have a story. And if we really recognize the fact that our story and our experiences and our passions and things that we've overcome can inspire people, then people that are around us that we don't even know are watching us can be impacted in a very substantial way. So if you go down to Acts chapter 4, 
It says, the whole congregation of believers were united as one. They were of one heart and one mind. Have you ever been on a team or even watched a team play a sport? And the teams that are of one mind and one heart, they have one focus, they have one goal, they follow the direction of the coach. Winning games tend to happen more times than not. I remember there was a, a baseball player, I'm not gonna name his name, back when I was a kid, who had a real attitude with the manager of this particular baseball team. And the, the player decided to not seek the advice, not follow the advice of the, the guy in charge of the team, and he chose to do a play that uh, resulted in them losing that game. So the player decided that, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run this base, I'm gonna do what I need to do in order to get me to score a point. Well, the manager, after the game, made it very clear, and in years afterward, that if the player would have uh, played the game the way the manager told him to play the game, because of his decades of experience, certain things would have occurred that would have caused them to win the game because the player behind them, the, I'll name this one guy's name, his name was Lee May, Lee May of the Baltimore Orioles uh, was due to bat and would have definitely hit a home run and brought in the points that they needed to win the game. The point is, sometimes you and I think that we know more than we really know. And we choose not to follow the, the, uh, the advice of people that are wiser than us and then leveraging that advice for the sake of other people. So the story continues. It, the story says, they didn't even claim ownership of their possessions. No one said, that's mine, you can't have it. They shared everything. The apostles, they, they taught of what Christ taught, and if you don't know what the kind of parts of the Bible, Jesus was, was a teacher, he, he came to help people, and he really uh, shared how important it was to be selfless instead of selfish. I think sometimes you and I, just because we're human beings, we sometimes tend to be selfish instead of selfless. So he goes on to say in verse 34, and so it turned out that not a, not a person among them was needy. Those who owned fields or houses sold them and brought the price of the sale to the apostles and made an offering to it. So then the apostles, the, the students of Jesus back then, and they chose to share those goods and those investments with people around them. And I would venture to say that some of us may be, may be intimidated or think that we don't have enough goods or enough experience or enough of anything to share with people in our own lives. But I beg to differ with you because you have experiences, you have knowledge, you have stuff that you've gone through that are very valuable to people who have an open heart and who have an open mind. So today I'm asking you to never forget the importance of your role. Again, never forget the importance of your role. You've been in companies, you've worked in companies, you know of people who have worked in companies that maybe think that they're not very important because maybe they're on the lower part of that totem pole as far as hierarchy goes. But I can tell you from my own experience, the people that are in your mind, maybe in other people's mind on the lower part of the totem pole didn't do their job, then guess what? It, it really uh, dominoes up to the end result of stuff not happening correctly. So I would suggest to you that you and I have to understand that your role is not less important than the person on top. Let me share a story. 3,000 frightening feet above the ground, Soviet sport parachute Yuri realized that he was in trouble. His main chute had malfunctioned and his reserve chute a bar boiled, it kind of, it just twisted all around. So they, he, he had two chutes and none of them were even operational. Kicking his feet to slow the natural spiral caused the noisy whipping canopies above. So this guy yelled down to his fellow jumpers on the ground. His jump buddies sprang immediately into action, grabbed a packing mat, and sprinted toward the impact point. All the way down, this guy yelled and tugged furiously at the static lines in a vain attempt to clear the two tangled chutes. Below, his friend stretched the mat taut and waited. This guy plummeted into the canvas at bone-crushing speed, ripping the tarp from his rescuer's hands and knocked them to the ground. When the dust cleared, the guy laid gasping for breath and complaining of a sprained ankle. In addition to the injured leg, he suffered a few bruises. His jump buddies were there for this guy at the moment he needed them most. 
And I think you and I fail to realize that you could be one of those people that could maybe stand in, in, the, in the gap, if you will, literally, for people who may be falling, may be struggling, may be going through different situations in their lives when only you can make a difference. You say, but John, I don't have this, and I don't have that. I don't have money. I don't have a college degree. I don't have this. But you have life's experiences that can literally help people transform their lives if, I'll say it multiple times today, if they have an open mind and an open heart. Let me share another story. The Queen Mary was the largest ship to cross the oceans when it was launched in 1936. Through four decades in a world war, she served until she was retired and anchored as a floating hotel and a museum in Long Beach, California. During the conversion, her three massive smokestacks were taken off to be scraped down and repainted. But on the dock, they crumbled. Nothing was left of the three-quarter inch steel plate from which the stacks had been formed. All that remained were more than 30 coats of paint that had been applied over the years. The steel had rusted away. I wonder how many people you know that are just painted on. They're a facade of what they used to be because they just painted over stuff instead of maintaining. The older I get, the more I'm realizing that you and I have to purposely maintain where we're trying to get to in life. Because if you don't keep maintaining yourself, what's going to happen? You're going to degrade. You're going to get unhealthy. You're going to maybe forget things that you should have remembered because you haven't maintained a certain status in your own life. In fact, what Jesus said in, in, the, uh, in the Bible, he, ta- he, he told the religious people that they were, they, in my paraphrase, they, they were fakes. They were just painted over nothings because they looked the part, but they weren't acting the part. I wonder how many times you know, have known people who maybe have looked the part, but they haven't been acting the part. They, they have maybe a title, but there's nothing behind the title. They say one thing and they do another. I think oftentimes we, we stereotype people. You and I have stereotype, I, I stereotype people more times than I care to share with you. But I think, more, I think you and I have to understand that people are known more by their actions than their words. People could say all kind of nice things to you, but their actions say something sometimes completely opposite of what they're telling you. So Jesus was the type who encouraged other people to go farther, to, to uh, be consistent. In fact, there was a story uh, that the New Testament talks about. Let me just set the scene. In that culture, the Jewish people were not allowed to associate with people that were not Jewish. Jesus was Jewish. So he uh, was, uh, he had this hunch to go to this well, and there was a woman there who was getting water out of the well. Well, again, his culture said, you are not to talk to this woman. So Jesus, he was one who decided to break apart all the hierarchy and all the rules, if you will, of his culture. So he decided to start a conversation with this lady. And the lady was really not uh, somebody that uh, he would normally hang out with. They wouldn't go to Starbucks together. They wouldn't have a meal together because her her past, her history, was a, a complete opposite of what a rabbi should be hanging around in that culture. Jesus was a teacher. He, he had a title. But if you notice, if you read through the, just the first four books of the New Testament, Jesus didn't allow his title to go to his head. In fact, the people that were uh, much older than him allowed their title to go to their head, and they wouldn't associate with people that were unlike them at all. So Jesus, he decided to have this conversation with this lady, and, and he uh, was able to uh, uncover some, some secrets, if you will, about this lady that few people knew. As a result of that conversation, which didn't take very long, maybe less than an hour, she was able to influence her entire town positively as a result of Jesus' desire and or getting out of that box, if you will, to have a conversation with this lady that no other rabbi would even approach. And I would suggest to you that there might be conversations 
that you and I have been maybe intimidated to have with other people because they're not like us. Maybe they don't look like us, they don't look like us, they don't behave like us. Maybe they're from a, a different part of the economy or a different, they were raised in a much different way. Maybe they, they look all tough and gruff, but if you really look at their heart, they're just like you and me. So I'm asking you today that you don't have to wait until maybe you have all your stuff together in order to impact people's lives. You impact people's lives a day at a time. You impact people one relationship, one conversation at a time. So Jesus taught his, his disciples over and over again that you do things that are not necessarily comfortable. Let me share another story. There was, again, in that culture, the religious people were not allowed to associate with some people. And in addition to hanging out or not hanging out with people that didn't behave like these Jewish folks, they weren't able to hang out with people who had a disease or who were sick. And in that culture, there were a lot of lepers, L-E-P-E-R-S, people with, with skin diseases that in that part of the world were considered unclean. Well, Jesus chose to hang around people that were unclean in order to make a difference in people's lives. And the religious people flipped out over it. They, in fact, his followers even were like, you know, Jesus, what are you doing? You can't be hanging around people like this because they're unclean or they're, they're not like us. When another part of the, the, the scriptures, it says, my paraphrase is that Jesus came to help the sick, not to help the healthy. And I think sometimes we forget that our role, whatever title you have, or even you don't have a title, that your role and my role is to help the unhealthy. You say, John, how do I know who is unhealthy and who isn't unhealthy? Well, the people that are struggling in your own circle, the people that are, that are struggling in your own family, that maybe they maybe need some advice, maybe they're looking for that friend to step up and be proactive and in taking an interest in them. Now, sometimes that, that is rejected that is pushed away from people that uh, maybe are hurting because there's an old saying that I think John Maxwell uh, borrowed from somebody else. He said that hurting people hurt people. And I would suggest to you that maybe as you approach people in your own life that you think might need some encouragement or some help, they may initially push you away because they may be hurting, they may be struggling. I've, I'm that way, you know, when, when I'm hurting, I don't want to be around people. I don't, want to, I don't even want to talk to people. I don't want to speak. To, I just don't, I don't want to, I want to be left alone. So you and I are going to have to be careful how we approach these people. But I would dare say that the majority of people that you approach in order to serve, in order to help them, would appreciate your kindness and your compassion. And I think that is what we're talking about here today on this show. So again, Jesus was one of those guys who taught people to, uh, to step out and do the extraordinary. In fact, over in the book of, of, of Luke, it, it talks about uh, his followers were asking him to help them increase their faith, increase their faith. And, and if you notice, if you read just the first four books of the Bible, the tendency is that things happen when we step out to do something for other people. I'll say this over and over again on the shows and in the books that I write and the articles that I write, that you don't have to wait until you have all your stuff together in order to make a difference in, in some, some, somebody's life. You really don't. I, I thought that. I thought that when I was in my 20s, that I had to have all my ducks in a row. I had to have, have everything perfect in order to impact people in the world. But I would suggest to you that if you wait until you have everything perfectly set up in your own life, but that's not going to happen. Nobody dies having everything together, have everything ready, have everything organized. It just it is, doesn't that way. It doesn't work that way. So Jesus taught about uh, watching out for other people. In fact, he, he kind of associated himself as being a shepherd. And in that culture, in that part of the world 2,000 plus years ago, the shepherd, there was a lot of shepherds, there was a lot of sheep out there. So what did shepherds do? They looked out for the sheep. Think about that a minute. Shepherds look out for their sheep. Friends are supposed to look out for their friends. Friends are supposed to help friends do things that maybe they couldn't do themselves. And I would suggest to you that maybe in your own way, in your own life, 
that you could be viewed as a shepherd to do something for other people that maybe they couldn't do for themselves. And we're talking again about serving other people. And again, you don't have to have this title. I'll say that probably 10 times in this show. You don't have to have a title to serve other people, but you do need to be faithful. In order to impact people, you need to be faithful. There's an old story that says uh, General William Westmoreland was once reviewing a platoon of, of paratroopers in Vietnam. As he went down the line, he asked each of them, how do you like jumping, son? Love it, sir, was the first answer. How do you like jumping, he asked the next. The greatest experience in my life, sir, exclaimed the paratrooper. How do you like jumping, asked the third. I hate it, sir, he replied. Then why do you do it, asked Westmoreland. Quote, because I want to be around guys who love to jump. This is from Harvey McKay's book, Swim with the Sharks. Again, because I want to be around guys who love to jump. I would suggest to you that if you don't have the courage to jump, if you don't have the courage today to impact people's lives, then I suggest you hang around people who are impacting people's lives. I would say that 90% of people out there, wherever out there is, are more inclined to tear people down or to be critical of other people's attempts to do different or great things. I would suggest to you, again, that you hang around people that are, are intentional about changing people's lives, who, who like to jump, who like to, to challenge themselves to do a variety of different things. There were people that if you don't write stuff down to do stuff, guess what? Stuff doesn't get done. Again, stuff doesn't get done if you don't put it on paper. Now, that's a whole, probably a whole new show, a whole different show. But if you don't decide every day to do something, at least in your mind today, that's extraordinary, guess what? That's not going to happen. The older I get, I realize that if I don't write stuff down to do stuff proactively, then knowing how I'm wired, it doesn't get done. And I'm wondering if that's the same thing in your life, that if you don't write stuff down, if you don't intentionally set out to do something extraordinary every day, it generally speaking doesn't get done. When Pope John Paul II appointed uh, Colonel Esterman a uh, springtime several years back as the new commander of the 100-member elite corps of the Swiss Guards who provide protection for the Pope, the story says, it was the happiest moment of his life, as well as the, the pinnacle of his career. It was a particularly noteworthy achievement since this guy himself was not Swiss. He was the first non-Swiss to hold that job. Yet within hours of this exciting moment, he and his wife lay lifeless in a pool of blood on the floor of their apartment, the victims of a man whose fury was energized by one emotion, self-pity. The murderer who committed suicide at the scene was, was a youthful member of the Swiss Guards. But this guy, unlike fellow guards, was not slated to be recognized as an upcoming ceremony to mark his appointment as the chief of these guards. This guy scolded a guy a number of times. The long story short is that he decided to destroy other people's lives because he didn't get the title. He didn't get the role. I wonder how many people that you really don't realize are jealous of you because they don't have the title. You see, John, I don't even have a title, but actually you do. You impact pe more people than you realize just by doing those little things for the benefit of other people that are radically changing their lives for the better. You see, John, but I don't really do much. I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not on TV. I'm not on radio. I don't, I don't write books. But your attitude, how you treat other people, impacts more people than you, can, you or I can, can really understand because we're trying to make a difference. And that's what I'm kind of sharing here today, that you and I have a responsibility. We have a role to make a difference. Jesus talked about it all the time. He talked about serving other people consistently. He talks, talks about that, that we're not entitled to a reward for serving other people. That's not what it's about. It's about setting aside your agenda and making a difference in people's lives because it's really not about you at all in the first place. But you're maybe one of the few that should be willing to put your own fears and your, your own anxieties to the side for the benefit of people out there, wherever there is. 
So I'm encouraging you to, today to, to serve, to have a servant's mindset, because oftentimes if you don't choose to serve people in your own life, then they're not going to be elevated to another level in their lives because you have chosen, I'll be somewhat blunt here, you have chosen to be selfish in your own insecurities, your own fears, and won't set them aside for other people. And that's really what life is supposed to be all about. The more people I read about that have made big successes in life, they have some of the same struggles that you and I have. Some, some of them just don't want to get out of bed in the morning. Some of them struggle with health issues, but they consistently keep getting up over and over again, not for their own benefit, but for the benefit of maybe many, many people they have never even met and may never meet because they know that there are people out there who need them. So as I wind down this, this show today, I want to encourage you to step out and do the extraordinary. Step out and set aside all these anxieties, all these opinions of yourself that you think you're not good enough or that you don't, you don't think you have the right education. Or maybe you come from a side of the train tracks that maybe, you know, they never cross the other side of the train tracks. Well, let you be the exception. Not for your own sake, not for the sake of a title, not because you want to be seen by other people. It has, that should have no bearing on what I'm talking about here today. It's all about serving people, setting aside what you want to do for the benefit of other people. My name is John Carver, and I appreciate you watching the show, and we'll be back real soon.